Good day, everyone. Hope you guys are blessed and had peace, joy, love, appreciation, respect, and forgiveness. Last week, uh, Ben, one of my favorites, uh, students of the week, biomedical engineering, which is unbelievable, Destin Wade, um, ethnic studies. This week is Khalil Benson, sociology, and uh, Charlie Arpadal, as usual, developmental biology. Um, TV with Arizona Game announced uh, for Fox. That gives us six games on network television a season through five games. We're number two nationally. Most viewership with 21.5 viewers. Um, we're the only team through week five in the top five games of every week. Defensive buffs giving up just seven points in the third quarter this season and just 5.2 point, points per game in the second half. CU is one of the six teams in the nation that has not allowed 100-yard rusher or receiver this season uh, at the line 14 last year. Good Lord, Jesus. God, that is staggering. PFF grades, uh, Sammy, BJ, Arden, uh, all ranking the top 10 in the Big 12, which I don't know what PFF really is. I don't know who really looks at it. Um, Nikhil Green ranked second. I don't know what they, I'm not going to even bore you with that. Jordan Seaton named to the on three, which is one of the publications that's not one of my favorites. Um, he's a freshman All-American team. Um, Micah uh, leads all true freshmen um, with three rushing touchdowns. I thought we don't recruit guys out of high school. My bad. Shador named to midseason. I'm oh, not going to do that because you're going to say I'm talking about my son. Travis, not going to do that because he's just like my son. Oh, anyway, glad to be here. Great walk. Campus is beautiful. Hospitality is great when you're winning. We all know that. But uh, love where we are, but we're not comfortable by any means. Let's go. Ladies first. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Edwards. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. With the news with Woods and Brown opting for red shirt. Has anyone had that conversation with you of yeah. having a red shirt? Yeah. Could you say specifically Several, who? several guys. You got to understand it. Uh, I understand it. And I always want what's best for the kids. I really do. Like, that's their prerogative. But you know, it kind of puts us in a situation. Because now is there a question, are you red shirting for us? Or are you red shirting for you? And it should be uh, NCAA rules and guidelines that if you choose that particular course, not that our guys are, we should be able to allow you to go. Because if a guy is redshirting for himself and he don't plan on being here, why would you want him here and he don't plan on being here? That's really not fair to him. It's not fair to his teammates. It's a lot of unfairness, like the gentleman who chose the red shirt, um, the quarterback. So is it is it right that he's still practicing or with the team? Like, what course of action is that? Does he? I don't know. Does he? You guys tell me. Does he still practice? He's not, he's not. So you just let him walk away. It should be something. It, it, it needs to be a, a rule in CA wise. To if that's your course of action, they should let them go and start their next journey with the whatever team that is that they've already been talking to because they've already been talking. Just like the two guys from uh, that we played several weeks ago at Colorado State, they said they were offered how much in the portal? How you off, how you offered 600 and you didn't get in the portal? Why can none of y'all ask that question? How are you offered 600,000 but you didn't get in the portal? I got time today. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Hi, Coach. Taylor Sadowski. Taylor, how you doing? Doing great. How about you, sir? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. Fantastic. Um, so bye weeks are fantastic to get, get your boys' bodies rested, all that kind of good stuff, too, yes. as well. But for you as a head coach, how does that just, like, do for you fundamentally and mentally, um, too, as well? I go, I go to Texas, which is vacation for me. I go and really relax and uh, recalibrate my mind. And the staff <laughs> knows that been with me. They know when I get back is home. They know when I get back I got a list of, like, 30 things that – I want to implement it uh, expeditiously. They know I'm calling while I'm gone, and I'm gearing up. I, I want videos. I want this. I want that. So well, it's tougher on the coaches when I get away because I come back with, with some much more passion, you know, than I already have, and that's a lot of passion. So I love it, but 
I wish you can continue to to play in the realm that we were playing in, but also we had some guys banged up that, that needed a week off for sure. So I'm, I'm happy about it. Hey, Coach. <clears throat> what's you talked last on? week. Uh, what's up, man? How are you? You talked last week about the UCF game and how the extra hours and time in the hotel led to extra film hours. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that can be a kind of like an aha moment for the players, understanding mm -hmm. how that can affect them on Saturdays? Most definitely. It's a moment that they definitely glean from. See, most people think you only learn from your losses, but you learn a lot from your wins. You learn a lot from successes. You don't just learn from when you're getting your butt kicked. I've never seen a boxer get knocked out and say, you know, I learned a lot from that, right? Like, you don't – that that does not happen most of the time. And these young men are uh, – they understand. I, I asked them a question this morning. Uh, if God were to give you what you desired in this game, what would it be? And what would you sacrifice for it? Great question. And the answer, the responses, and all that was I was trying to get them to understand that whatever you want in life, you're going to have to sacrifice something. If you want a lot, you're going to sacrifice a lot. It's not you sacrifice a little and you get a lot. It don't work like that. Life don't work like that. Uh, life is pretty much consistent tremendously. And football has no feelings or emotions for you. So what you put in normally, you get out. Hey, Coach. Good morning. How you doing, uh, Jason sir? Jones, Sports Illustrated. Uh, since your win against UCF, there have been a lot of national media people, some of which you know personally, have sort of changed their tune on what you in this program can do this year. Mm -hmm. Do you guys notice that, or is noise noise, whether it's good or bad? I notice that because I get it from everywhere. Um, I really don't care, honestly, because it's quicker. They, it's quick, as quick as they jump on, they can jump off. As quick as they support, they can uh, try to dismantle. As quick as they love, they could hate. So I really don't get into that. I, I, I know who it is for, for my purposes. I, I definitely know who said what for my purposes. And my sons and, uh, and uh, Darius and all those guys who reach the people, I mean, they and Neely also, they know. You know, they keep me abreast of what time it is so I know what's what. But as far as the young men, I just don't want them to believe, in, to believe that they arrived. All this hoopla about Jordan Seaton. I say, Jordan, you know a couple of plays they could have had you right there. Um, our DBs, you know, if they had threw the ball right there, they had us. So don't believe that foolishness. Work on your game and work on your craft. Be the best you could be, but don't believe the hype whatsoever. Let's, let's keep our heads down and stay locked in. Hey, Coach, uh, Pat Graham, Associated Press. Nice to see you. Um, you real quick, a procedural question. Love Shiloh. your hat, man. Love your hat. Well, exactly. George Brett, baby. Oh. George Brett, I grew up on George Brett. That's well you I should. grew up at Terry Park. 100%. I was hustling balls in the third grade. Third grade. I used to skip school, bring my little sock. I used to beat everybody running when they hit the home run balls, and I used to get the balls, and I used to sell them during the game. Really? That was my hustle. I used to always make sure I brought the teacher my best ball <laughs> with an autograph. I used to sit out there where they came out there out of the clubhouse, and I would get their autographs. And I would beg for crack bats. Crack bats was like 10 bucks or $15. You know, a good home run ball in BP was like $350, um, $1.50 bat ball. Amos Otis, I used to go down there in the batting cages and help him pick up the balls. I used to be standing on the gate, little kid, you know, during seven, eight years old. And he used to let me come in and I help him get up the balls and pick up the balls. And he would give me several of them. And that was my hustle, man. So George Brett, Amos Otis, Will, Willie, Willie Wilson, Wilson, all those guys Frank was my White. guy. And to top the story off, I was drafted by the Kansas City Royals out of high school. Really? Dick Hauser was the manager. Dick Hauser is the one, the late great Dick Hauser was the one that said, son, if you're good enough for us to draft you right now, I hear you're a pretty good football player. I will go to college and we'll draft you again. And that's why. I went and played football because they offered me a substantial amount of money, even though I wasn't an early round pick. But it was a lot of money from a kid that grew up two miles from the place in the hood. Wow. So that's, that's my story about the role. You and Bo Jackson have been perfect. Hey, Amen. <laughs> I don't think they'd let that happen, but. <laughs> hey, you, uh, Shiloh. Mm -hmm. Any, what's the he's ready. Shiloh's ready. He's practicing. He's full go. Has a rubber cast on. He's doing his thing. I can't wait to 
seeing back there because he and uh, Cam is, is they're unbelievable together. Um, Carter has done a wonderful job, got a lot of experience, and uh, he's in on some packages as well, but Shallow's full go. We have we should have the entire starting defense this week. Nice. And then to kind of piggyback off his question. Yes, sir. Um, can you take any lessons from 3-0 and last year and applying to 4-1 and this year? Can two you... different teams, two different situations, two whole different uh, thought processes, even with the staff, as well as the young men we have in this locker room. But yes, me personally, it's some things that I've done tremendously differently uh, in my approach and to detail with the staff, as well as the, the young men that play on this team, as well as with the support staff as well. So we had a 6.30 meeting this morning to reiterate some things that I wanted to see on the scout teams to give us the look that we wanted and expedite the look. So yes, there has been different things um, from my approach, definitely. But those are totally different young men that's out there, man. What we have on defense, I think, what, is it two players, three players that started a year ago? I think that's Cam Shiloh. And uh, Benson, right? Coates, Shane. Yeah, four. I'm sorry. That's, that's that's it. So we have several new new players that are really doing a great job for us. And offense, what is it? Two. Um, Shador Travis. Jimmy, Jimmy. Jimmy, three. That's it. I love it. Uh, hey, Coach. I'm Jack Carlo with Buffalo's Wire. How's it going? Jack Carlo. Um, we saw a video of you earlier this week telling your team that you, know, you guys shouldn't be surprised that you're four and one. Right. So, if you could elaborate a little bit more on that message and why you felt the need to share it. How can you be surprised that you're winning in life, Jack? How can you be surprised that you put on a nice outfit and somebody tells you you look good? How can you be surprised when you get out the hair that barbershop and you look in that mirror and say, "That's the one"? Like, how can you be surprised with the expectation you have for yourself? The only way you can be surprised is you didn't expect it. We expect the results when we put in the work. I just don't want it going to the heads, but we shouldn't be surprised of where we are. We should be appreciative in understanding what allowed us to be where we are, but it shouldn't be no surprise to you. So when it's a surprise, you get kind of discombobulated and you, 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 you kind of take things wrong instead of really looking at it and dissecting why you are where you are. It shouldn't be no surprise to anybody, but I don't want them to be in like a daisical thinking um, this is easy because the wind don't care who attains it. Has no mind, no memory, no what whatsoever. Does not care. So it might as well be us if it does, has no care and no feelings for it. Hey, Coach, John Treach, 9 News. A slightly different question. Four and one is an uncommon place, and everything is out there for you conference-wise mm -hmm. and beyond. To have that right now, I mean, how exciting is that within your program? Um, it's not, because you don't expect it. I can tell the way you asked the question, but we do. We 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 expect that. We're we're some of us are still upset about the Nebraska game. We wish we had that right now, because we felt like we we weren't where we are then, where we are right now. Like we really expect that. I mean, it's not being cocky or anything like that, that's what we expect. When we practice like we do, prepare like we do, we expect the results. And we have some players that can really play this game at a high level. That's why scouts are here every day. We just happen to have two that, like I said previously, will probably be in the top two of the top five draft picks. And everybody disputed that, didn't they, this summer? I can't get no help in the church over here. Didn't they dispute that? <laughs> get some help over here in the church. I know not to look at that side anymore. They disputed that. Hey, he don't know what he's talking about. Now it, it is what it is. You start seeing this stuff become a reality. It's, it's, it's real. We not spoke. We didn't speak it into existence. We know what we see. I know this game. You got to give me some kind of credit for knowing this game of football. Um, I played it for 14 years. I covered it for 20 years. I covered it more than some of you guys have covered it. And, and, and I know television, I know this game, I know people, I know management, I know what my expectation is, I know how this thing is supposed to look. So I call a spade a spade. Great question, though. Appreciate it. Hey there. How you uh, doing, sir? Mark Kislett, Denver Gazette. Mm -hmm. um, I'll follow up on what something you just said. You have three of the top ten players in college football, and Travis is two of them. And that's... It's well said. Yeah. Um, so now I'm going to go beyond that. We've seen from Travis things that we've seldom seen in college football. True. We saw from you 
in baseball and football, mm -hmm. things we seldom have seen from an athlete. Is Travis more talented as an athlete than you were? It's not me against Travis. I had my turn, man. I'm not a doorknob anymore. You can't just turn me on and off for like a light switch anymore. I don't do that. Travis is everything. His it is it his turn now. I want him to have all the accolades, all the praise, all the love, all the attention, all the focus that he desires. I've had my turn. I'm that old boxing coach in the corner. It says left, right, left, right. Hit him right here. All right, come on up to the corner. Let me tell you this. That, that's who I am right now. I've had my turn. It's not me against him. Do you see some of you? I see, I, I see similarities in certain areas, especially away from the game, especially his demeanor away from the game. I absolutely love it, and I love who he is in the game. We don't smoke. We don't drink. Um, um, we're not profane. Um, Travis is a really, really, really good young man. A really good young man. You don't you, contrary to what you may think, and this is not a shot at any other program, and God forbid that it, it transpires. But our kids ain't getting in trouble, man. We got some good young men in this locker room, and I think they should be applauding them, regardless of what you say or think about them, regardless of how they perform or how they don't perform this week. They get it right and perform the next week, and they're not getting into trouble. And guess what? The GPAs are tremendous. I just checked them and got on some of the couple of their butts, but they're doing a great job, and I'm proud of them. I'm proud of the coaches, and I'm proud of the academic team for, for the standard that they've set. And, and we are on our way to where we're headed, and I love the direction. I truly do, tremendously. Not talking about any other college. It's talking about us. I don't need to step on somebody for us to look taller. Never done that when I played, and I won't do it now. Coach Prime, uh, speaking of one of those young men, Nakai Hill Green, just how would you describe his impact you know, on the field but as a leader for this team as well? Um, we have a plethora of leaders on that defensive side of the ball, which is a good thing. He's one of them. Um, I cannot praise him without praising Bentley as well. Those guys, is, is like they have a silent competition amongst one another to see who gets to the ball the quickest, to see who racks up the most tackles. Those guys are at it. Both of them are a little banged up, but guess what? They fight through it at practice. I try to give them days off, and they, they still want to work. So his impact on his defense is tremendous. Um, I, I love the tone. I love the temperament, the aggressiveness, the physicality. I love what he brings to the table, as well as the intellect and insight. Hey, Coach. Brian Howell from Bola Davis. What's going on? have a question and a follow, but you mentioned you guys are different now than, than Nebraska. Mm -hmm. it, it does seem like you guys are different from uh, starting when you came out of halftime at Nebraska. Mm -hmm. uh, how much joy do you get out of seeing this team kind of growing in confidence from that point well, to where you're at now? Tremendous, um, because I've seen it well before, and I know coaches get upset because coaches and parents get upset because we know your capabilities. We know what you have inside of you, and we just want you to live out your purpose and what you should be doing. That's why parents get upset with some of y'all in here, um, and I get upset with some of my kids because of the same darn thing. Coaches are the same way. We're really parenting a football player out there on the field, and just to see them come into their own, just to see them execute the assignments, just to see them want it, just to see them call team meetings on their own and come out here on the practice field and, and work on their own without us, shoot, that's – that's what you want. I mean, that's the kind of guys that you wanted to gather um, and call it the team. Those are the type of young men, and those are the men that we have. And, yeah, yeah, we had to get rid of some luggage because, you know, we had a limited time to go shopping. And I do mean shopping. And I, it's unfortunate that that's what we do now in college football. Even with guys out of high school, you shopping. And you hope that this, this, uh, <laughs> this outfit look good on you. But sometimes it don't when it gets in the light. So it's a good thing. We're happy where we are, um, but we're a long way from where we want to be. Just a quick follow-up to that. Um, with the bye, do you, did you worry at all that a bye would kind of kill some momentum, or do you think this team came back uh -huh. eager to let's keep going? Worry and faith can't live together. I'm a man of faith, not a man of worry. Hey, Coach Ryland Skulls from Ralph Report. You have the opportunity to play against uh, one of the big contributors, contributors last year and a person you've known for a long time in Dylan Edwards. What is it going to be like to face off against Dylan as an opponent? They changed their name to the Dylan Edwards. <laughs> That's what the team is called now, the Dylan Edwards. 
we ain't playing against Dylan Edwards. We playing against a darn good football team, man. Dylan just happened to be on their team. I love the young man. I I, I love him to life. I, I really do. And everybody who leaves here in the right manner, I as well as just leave, period, I want them to be successful. I have never wished wrongful or bad things on any young man or woman in my life or any of you all. I want you to be successful, and I want you to find your purpose. If you find your purpose and you understand what it is, you won't hate on me. You won't hate on your neighbor, your friend, or your family members. So Dylan made a tremendous choice for, for he and his family, and I'm, I support that 100%. Um, I just hate when guys make those decisions and they leave and they shoot back at us. If you're going where you're going, you don't shoot back because you're so focused on where you're headed. You ain't got time to turn around and shoot back. So I, I, I thank him for not being that guy. And uh, we had some great moments, and uh, he's going to have many more great moments. So I'm proud of him. I just don't want him to perform well against us, but I want him to perform, perform well against every other team. I really do.